Lois let us know and it's time for another Halloween transformation. For this zombie look I wanted to combine a few different artistic references so you may notice that this is slightly anime cosplay-esque. But I couldn't just leave it there so I made him rotten and mouldy. I started by mapping out where I wanted the holes to be on the face and to do this I used a Milk Jumbo Pencil by NYX. With this part there was no real method to my application, just trying to make sure that I wasn't making any patterns because I wanted to make it look natural that the skin had started to really rot and start to peel away from the face. Now as per usual, and people are probably sick of seeing me doing this, but I'm using liquid latex and cotton wool to build out the areas around those mould holes. I understand that using the same products may be boring to some people, but latex and cotton wool is my favourite thing to work with when it comes to building up these areas on the face, and it's also the cheapest and most readily available, so that's what I like to use. But to achieve the look of getting these broken holes and like open fibres on the face, I just apply down a layer of the latex and cotton wool into an area and then start to pull pieces out so it kind of frays and makes holes and then stick them back down to the face to mimic the look of like broken fibres on the face. And that parts of the skin have started to fall and rot away to leave these wounds and open parts in the face that we're going to be filling with rot and mould later on. Lovely. Being as I'm trying to create the look of rotten holes in the skin, I didn't want to follow the same texture going across the whole face. So I wanted to make some actual like big open holes. And to do this, I formed a little piece of cotton wool and liquid latex into a ball. And then with my tweezers, I started to work it around in the center until it started to break, kind of making it look like a bullet wound. And then I frayed out the edges and made it very thin to look like a deep set open hole in the skin. Keeping both those techniques in mind, I went over the whole face applying latex and cotton wool to the areas I'd marked out with the jumbo pencil. The main thing to keep in mind to try and make this look natural is not to follow any patterns, so try and make any of the little holes look different, but also flow together so that it looks like this has happened over a long period of time. Some of the areas I made larger like this one, and I just made sure that the bottom of it was thicker than the top, so I made a little bit of extra latex and cotton wool around those bottom parts to make it look like the skin had sagged. And I filled in any areas around that with that fibre latex technique to make it look like the skin had got really thin there and was only holding on by a few small pieces. For the area around his nose, I wanted it to look like his nose had rotted away and there was just a great big open cavity where part of his nostril would have been before. Doing this part just requires a little bit more cotton wool and latex to build it up to the bridge of your nose to make it look like it's the same height because that's going to make it look more like it's sagged on the skin and the skin there is still part of the cheek but it's kind of just blended into this area that's rotted away now. In doing this part, I did sacrifice half of my breathing because now one nostril is completely blocked, but hey, I've done worse. For the remaining areas of my skin that don't have any texture yet and they're just open and look a bit odd, I'm taking the remaining liquid latex that I have, applying it to the skin, and before it has a chance to dry, I'm rubbing it over my face. That starts to make the latex ball up and create a texture that will look like it is part of the rotten skin, but it's not making that it's got holes or anything that's too dramatic. It will just follow in the texture and make everything look like it's a little bit more cohesive, and then it's all part of one look. Being as my forehead was going to be covered up with a wig, I never applied a link to there, but any areas that you was putting this on, you'd want to apply it so it matched into those wounds on the face. Letting all that texture and latex dry down before I move on, once that was fully dry, I then went in with a foundation, and to make it look a little bit more rotten, I mixed in a small amount of green face paint with this, and by a small amount of face paint, I do really mean a very, very small amount. I didn't want the face to be initially completely green, I just wanted the skin tone to look like it was dead and starting to mould. I'm going to be going in and adding those extra green areas on top of the skin, because I want them to look like they're actually sitting on the skin, and the skin hasn't turned green entirely. I wanted to keep it a little bit more along the natural line of the skin is just dead. At this part anyway. I use that mix to apply over any of my exposed skin and on the areas that have got a little bit too much texture I just use my finger to push it in because sometimes a brush will glide over and not fully cover the latex. To set everything in place I use the Dermacolor loose fixing powder and I really did apply this heavily to make sure that I looked kind of dusty. In person this is more visible than it is on camera but that really thick heavy layer of powder does start to make it look like there is mould spores growing on the face and there's just mould and mildew starting to form everywhere. To put a base down inside the holes and to give them a little bit more depth I used a black Grimace cream face paint. 90% of these holes are going to get covered up by the mould pieces that we put in later on but you need to put down a base of dark so that everything that isn't covered gives it more depth and it sinks back into the face and there isn't any bare skin exposed. And I didn't just use that face paint in those holes itself, I actually went into some of the fibre areas and applied it to the edges of them and faded it out into the skin to make it look like that area has sunk back into the shadows of the face. I just assessed all the texture I made over my skin and anywhere where I thought there should be a shadow or a little bit more depth I applied some of that face paint. This is basically like contouring, it's just applying that into the areas that you want to push away from the face and make it look a little bit more like there is depth there to really sell the point that these are holes in the face. I 
I also use that same black to apply it into the inside proportions of my top and bottom lip to give them more of the effect that they look like they're dead. And I smudged it all around my eyes, bringing it all the way up to my brow bone and to the inside proportions of the bridge of my nose, making sure that it was darkest on my lid. This just helps in sinking the eyes back into the face and giving them a little bit more depth. Now onto the fun part, applying all of the mouldy bits, and these pieces are made out of just an old craft sponge. Now this is a sponge that I'd used for face painting in the past that got ruined. I just ripped it up into pieces, laid it out, and then painted all of them with a green acrylic paint. It's a little bit time consuming to rip it up into these small pieces, and it looks like it isn't going to work, but once they have dried down and the acrylic has made them go hard, they get a nice rough texture to them, and once you start stacking them on the face and layering them in certain areas, it gives the effect of like bumpy mould clusters on the face, which is a horrible way of describing it, but that's what it looks like. And this larger one that you've just seen me apply was done exactly the same way. I just clustered them all together while the paint was still wet and it stuck them together into this little mat kind of thing and I can just customise that and rip it up into the areas that I want to fill with just a little bit more mould. To stick the mouldy sponge pieces to the face, some places I'm literally just pushing it into the holes, which if you're trigophobic, just look away now, and the other places I'm using some liquid latex just on a little dish that I'm dipping the piece of sponge into and sticking it into the area I want to place it. On this area on the nose, I wanted most of the mould spores to be on the bottom part of the hole and have the top part open, because obviously that would be the nose cavity, and most of the mould would be sitting on that tiny little bit of skin, literally just teetering on the edge. This literally came to me when I was filming and I'm really glad that it did and I'm applying moss. Yes, this is literally just moss. This is a dried sheet moss that retains its green colour and you can find it online and in most craft stores where they have like floristry arrangement things. It's mainly something that florists use in flower arrangements to just give it a little bit more of a nice texture and that is exactly what it did on this look. I love the texture that it's brought to the skin and it's just something that really added that extra pop to those mouldy areas and making them look really realistic. Once all of the mould patches were stuck in place, I went back into those darker areas and used a black Elamasca gel eyeliner to really set those holes to make them really, really deep and dark. I also dotted it in certain places around those mould holes to give the effect of black mould spots on the skin. Everything about this look is layering textures and this is one of the things that really brings everything together. I'm going in with the Cryolon Bruise Wheel and I'm using this in certain areas over the face to add more layers of texture. The heavy layer of foundation that we applied made the face look very flat and although this zombie is dead, it would kind of have, for want of a better word, life to its face. It would have textures, it would have problems and everything would look really realistic. But with that foundation, it's flattened everything out so the Bruise Wheel will help to add these things back to the skin. To add even more life to the skin, I'm going in with a green water activated Grimace face paint. This is a water activated one this time, not a cream. And I'm mixing that out to be really runny and I'm using a toothbrush to flick it onto the skin. Now this won't just make the skin look more green, but it'll also give another texture to finish everything off and blend in some of the areas of the latex that may not necessarily blend perfectly to a fine edge. I went ahead and applied the wig that I knew I was going to use now and I also put some of that dried moss into the hair as well. And I took some more of that green paint and splattered it over to the areas that were still exposed and I also took some of it down my neck and my chest. Now with this green face paint I wanted it to look more like the effect of algae so I wanted to have it really runny so it would run down my chest and down my neck in kind of like lines so it would be the area where water had been sitting on the skin and algae had start to grow. As I mentioned earlier on in the video I wanted the green to look like it was sitting on the skin not the effect that the skin was actually green. And this this is what I meant by that. And that's my mouldy zomboy complete. As I mentioned at the start of the video, there's a lot of different creative ideas that went into this zombie. I didn't want to make just a purely green one or one that was covered in blood and guts like some of the others that I've done before. So this is the outcome that I got from that. Now all of the products that I've used in this video will be listed down in the description below so you can go and check them out if you want to recreate this look. If you haven't already, please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and until my next transformation, bye bye.